He's the man who wrote Article 50 and he's worked across the top echelons of government for decades. Yesterday, Lord John Kerr gave a lecture about Brexit at the University of Glasgow. The title, Brexit, is the train crash avoidable. He's been critical of the UK government's tactics since the referendum result and has said in the past that he doesn't believe Article 50 is irrevocable. Well, I met Lord Kerr on his visit to Glasgow and asked him what he made of Theresa May's speech earlier this week. I think that the tone of the Prime Minister's speech was a bit Pollyanna. It was uh, very optimistic, I think, a little unrealistic in terms of the timing. I think the thing is going to take much longer than was suggested. And uh, on substance, I am, of course, sad that uh, she has uh, firmly decided that we're not even going to apply to stay in the single market. I think that's a great pity, because I think single markets be very good for Britain, very good for Scotland. And I think the Scottish government were quite right to put in their white paper as their number one option that the United Kingdom as a whole should stay inside the single market. I think I'm correct. I supported that. Is the reality, if this is Theresa May's opening negotiating position, that we will end up with less than she outlined? Yeah, well, I think she's, uh, she asked for one or two impossible things, I think. She said she didn't want to be in the customs union, but, oh, maybe we might be in the customs union for, uh, for example, cars. I guess she's thinking about Nissan. She said, uh, we didn't want to be the single market, but, oh, there might be a special deal for uh, the City of London Financial Services. She implied that we might be associate members of the customs union. There are no associate members of any customs union, as far as I know, so I don't quite know what she meant by that. But she talks about a unique deal for Britain. I mean, is that a possibility? I think we exaggerate our importance to others, particularly when you realise we're playing uphill. Uh, they uh, export to us goods and services to the value of just under 3% of their GDP. In our case, it's a little bit over 13%. So it's, it's a much more important negotiation for us than it is for them. And there are plenty of them, particularly most of the smaller ones, who have a negative trade balance with us. I mean, we say it's a, they have a positive trade balance. Yes, the Germans do, very big uh, positive trade balance with us. But the majority of members of the European Union have a negative trade balance with us, and they've all got to agree. She said that the UK as a whole, all the constituent parts of the UK are leaving the single market as she sees it. The Scottish government's still holding out the hope of a, 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 a deal which could leave them in a different position to the rest of the UK. How likely a prospect is that, do you believe? Uh, I think it's, it's difficult. I mean, I don't know uh, what's going on between the Edinburgh government and the London government, uh, but I was impressed in the Scottish government's white paper with their ideas of, for exploring whether, by attaching ourselves, we Scots, to uh, EFTA and the EEA, we could stick alongside the single market, provided London devolved enough additional powers to Edinburgh to enable Edinburgh to mirror single market laws. I'm not sure that's negotiable. I'm not sure it's, it's legally uh, feasible. I'm not sure it's workable with possible border controls at, at Gretna. But uh, it was a, at least a, a, a serious proposal, and I hope it's it will get a, get a serious answer. Yeah. How do you feel about the way Sir Ivan Rogers was treated and the fact that he had to leave the, his post as EU ambassador because it seemed that Downing Street and other parts of government had lost faith in him? Well, I think it's clear that he uh, felt he wasn't being consulted or, or that his views were not being taken into account. I was luckier. I worked for, when I was over there, for a couple of prime ministers who... Uh, um, were at the time central stage in Europe in a way that we aren't anymore. And uh, I didn't get into the sort of difficulties that Ivan was in. Uh, I haven't been in touch with them. I, I wouldn't myself have, have wanted my farewell message to the staff in quite these terms to have leaked. You're a crossbench peer. You're likely to get a, a vote on our exit from the EU. What sort of deal could you potentially vote for, or would you always vote against it? Uh, well, the... No, I couldn't uh, always vote against it. Uh, what matters is, is the timing. Mrs May said that it, as if it was a concession that the uh, Parliament would get a vote on the final outcome. Well, of course, Parliament always gets a vote on the final outcome. That'll be a treaty which we have to ratify. 
But if it is the f only when there's a final outcome that Parliament gets a vote, the choice for Parliament is this deal or no deal, because Article 50 is uh, very clear that when the time limit expires, if it hasn't been extended, if, if there's no deal, the negotiations haven't concluded, the country is out anyway. So we either leave with no deal or we leave with whatever is the deal that has been concluded. I say that means that the right time for Parliament to look at it is before the deal has been concluded, when it's still possible to have three options on the table. The sort of deal that we seem likely to get, no deal, or let's think again, we don't like this. We, you either need to negotiate a bit further or we need to go backwards and think again about whether this is a good idea leaving at all. But that would put the government in a very weak position, wouldn't it, if they had to go back and say Parliament's told us to renegotiate, they'd have to ask for an extension to the time frame potentially as well. So Europe would at that point surely believe they had the upper hand. There's some in Europe don't want us to go. They might think that things are moving in the right direction. Is it possible from your experience in Brussels to get a deal which includes support for financial services industry, the special arrangements for Northern Ireland voted through by the European Parliament? If the Parliament, when it looks at the deal, which will be about the beginning of 2019, if the Parliament doesn't like the deal and doesn't um, vote the deal through, then my prediction would be that the, people, the Council would come back to Article 50 and say we need uh, to offer an extension now. And uh, I don't know whether Mrs May would uh, buy that extension, but I think it should be, be very odd to turn it down. I think that is a 1 in 20 or 1 in 10 possibility that that could happen. Just a final question. Um, we have the inauguration of Donald Trump on Friday. You've worked in senior levels at the Foreign Office. How do you view the prospect of a Trump presidency? With astonishment and horror. I do remember that um, I was in Washington at Ronald Reagan's time. People laughed at Ronald Reagan before, said he was only a clapped-out old actor. He was a very, very clever president. Of course, he had been in politics a bit. He'd been governor of California. He'd run for president before. He knew how to charm people too. And uh, Donald Trump doesn't seem to do charm. People do change when they get to office, though, and some of his cabinet appointments, uh, the Defence Secretary, for example, and uh, the Secretary of State, both seem to me to be uh, serious heavyweight appointees. Which Trump will we see? The crazy midnight tweeter or a serious chairman of a cabinet with containing some very serious heavyweight people? I think that some of the things he's been saying up to now, like his um, attack on Mrs Merkel, uh, all his advisers will tell him he's got to stop. I don't know which way to go. I wish I was there. I, mean, you know, I was I was there in Reagan's time, I was there in Clinton's time. These were rational, normal human beings. My job was boring. That's Lord John Kerr, one-time UK ambassador to the EU and crossbench peer.